Now what we're going to do in this section is to process some quantitative data that we've already injected. So we're going to make sure we are in the correct project, which we are, our, wor our workshop project. We're going to go back to the navigation bar and open it. And under the quantitate section, we're going to double click on the build quantitation method option. It's going to ask us which set of data we would like to use. So we're going to select this set of data right here that we've got specifically for quants. It wants us to tell it which sample we consider to be representative to set up the calibration curves. So we will select a sample. Now this stage of the calibration method, it has a components tab. And in this tab, it's going to list every transition that we have in the method itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell it what our internal standard is, which in this case is mepivacaine. It would like us to designate a transition to use in order to, for the software to identify mepivacaine. So we're going to select that one which is 247 to 98. Then under the analyte section, we have to delete all of these specific transitions and change it to our method. Let me see if I can do it. And each one of these have to be individually deleted. If they're not, it gives you an error and you can't go forward to set up your database. So this takes just a second because you have to hand delete all of these. I think there's 130 transitions in here, so it does take just a second or two. And once we've got the analyte name column adjusted, we also have to do that for this transition column all the way back up. Oops. If you do happen to leave a, even a single one in there that's not designated, it gives you an error. So. You have to make sure that all of the spaces are cleared. Okay. So just for an example, we will look at just a handful of compounds. We'll start with amitriptyline, which is in there. You can tab over to the internal standard column. It only, is, it only shows up any internal standards that you've designated at the top. So mepivacaine is the only one that shows up. We go over to the transition column and we're going to select the one that we want to use. So in this case, it is 278. To 105. Now, if you don't remember off the top of your head your transitions, you can make yourself a little cheat sheet to keep by the instrument, which we've got here, that we're going to use in case we need it. So another one that we've got in here is oxycodone, and its transition is 316 to 241, and methadone, and its transition is 310 to 265. So those three are a good place to start. So once you've added in all of the analytes that are particular to your set of calibrators, you go to the integration tab. It may take it just a second. It's going to give you a list in this drop-down menu for analytes of all the compounds that you've put into this database. For us, there's only three. Um, it's going to show you the extracted ion chromatogram for amitriptyline because it's designated under the analyte section. On the right, it's going to show you the extracted ion chromatogram for mepivacaine. And in this tab, you have several different options that you can choose. 
for our purposes, the concentration units are going to be milligrams per liter, and the calculated concentration units are going to be the same. The bunching factor and the number of smooths, it's up to you. We found that three for both of those works well. You can adjust what you consider to be a, no a noise threshold and an area threshold for each analyte. You can also designate a more narrow or more broad retention time window that you would like the instrument software to look for your compound in. And it's going to automatically fill in the expected retention time window, but you can also designate that if you, if you need to. Most of the time when you make a change up here, you need to go ahead and apply it so that it accepts it and alters the extracted ion chromatograms here. Now, for the, these different extracted ion chromatograms, previous ones that we looked at, previous panes, when they're highlighted, it shows you a blue outline of the box. You don't get that same function here. It, it instead um, bolds the name and the chart. So we've altered that for amitriptyline, but we haven't done it from a pivocane. So we need to do that. So when you select that pane, you also need to change the same things that you changed previously and apply them. Now there is a way to change the defaults to do this for you automatically. If you go to Tools and Settings and do New Quantitation Results Table Settings. Nope, that's not it. No, that's not it either. There's only one left. Let's try option number three. Oh. I don't think it's in there. Oh, there it is. Quant method editor settings. Okay. It's always in the last place you look. So we can change our default concentration units to whatever it is that we feel like we're going to use the most frequently, including. Um, we can also change the retention time window, the smooths, and the bunching factors, which we will go ahead and do. Okay. Now, since we did that after we had already started to build this method, it's not going to help us now, but in the future, that's where you can change it. So, to do the exact same thing to the rest of the analytes, oh, it did save it. I'll take it back. One of the problems that you will find with some of the earlier eluders is that it doesn't do a very good job of integrating the complete peak because the peak shape is not as, as um, nice as some of the late eluders. So what you can do is change your bunching and smoothing factors to give yourself an appropriate fit. Oops. Well, it helps when you have it selected on the correct compound, now doesn't it? Select the compound you want to change. No wonder it didn't keep it. There we go. Oops. Okay, let's see. Which one is the magic number for oxycodone? Okay. So we've got nice integration here for our early eluder. We've changed all of the other parameters that we need to change at the top. So we're going to go to the next one, which is methadone. We'll go ahead and change the bunching and the smoothing just to be consistent. And we'll change our units. Did you apply the oxycodone one? Gosh, I hope I did. Yep. But if I didn't, I would have been in trouble. They would have been gone if you hadn't applied it. I think so. Okay, now that we're done with the integration tab, we're going to click on the very last one, which is the calibration tab. And this is where you can designate the default fit that you would like to use. It gives you the option of doing linear, linear through zero, quadratic, and some other things. For our purposes, we leave it at linear as the default, and occasionally if we need to change it to something else, we do it for individual um, analytes. 
We don't normally select any weighting, but you do have that option. There are several functions under the weighting that you can use. For the regression parameters, we use an area regression. Now that is all of our tabs to set up our quantitation method, so we need to make sure that we save it. So we go to File and Save As. We will label this Quant, today's date, and save it. Now that we've built the method, we're going to use the function called the Quantitation Wizard, which is going to set us up a result table for all of our analytes in our run based on the data that we just put into the method. So we're going to double click the Quantitation Wizard. It wants us to select the specific files we'd like to use, so there's our quant files. You have the function to add all of them or only part of them. If you want to add all of them, you just click Add All. If you would like to change that, you remove them. You can add, you can highlight and select only certain ones and add those over. It's very user friendly in that area. So, what we would like to do is add everything. For the purposes of this, we're going to add everything. Let me go to the next pane. We're going to go ahead and use the default settings for the results table. You can change those. You can change the actual default settings if you'd like in another area. Um, you can also set up a what's called a query, and you can use a default query to apply it to this set of data. We don't normally do that. We'll show you in just a second how to do queries in general. Go to the next page. Now, from this page, you can tell what your integration algorithm is. Analyst offers two different types. One's called Analyst Classic, and the other is called IntelliQuant. Normally, we use the Analyst Classic. We found that that works well for just about everything that we do. Now we're going to choose an existing method that we've already built to apply to this set of data, which is the one we just did, which is the quant 071807, and we're done. So it has taken that method that we built and applied it to all 16 samples. So, let me get rid of this bar for a second, this navigation bar, spread this out. You have a variety of columns of information that will come up when you start to do quantitations, and, and, and there's a lot of them. Now you can choose this, make it more or less specific, you can have a wide variety of columns in here. So, what we'll do is, we will change the table settings. Some of these things we don't necessarily need in there, and we'll say edit. We'll click on columns, say edit. Under sample, you can see you've got a, a large variety of things that you can include. If you want it to show you in the results table, the acquisition method, you can select that. Um, the sample comment is where we normally will put the descriptor of what each injection is and contains. So that is important. The sample type is important because you want to be able to designate a standard from an unknown, so we want to keep that showing. The name, if you're interested in that, the ID. And in this menu, you can see there are several other sections that you can look at, analyze specific, you can have it um, introduce a column for the analyte peak name. We're not really interested in the peak height. We are interested in the concentration. So again, you can edit this to be as specific as you would like. Now, the use record column will let you know when things have been included in your standard curve. So, we like to include that one in there. Sometimes you like to have accuracy, sometimes you don't. We don't have any customs or formula columns. So, okay. Now we're done. And you can see that when we in introduce the sample comment column, it has now shown us which ones are controls which ones are calibrators, that sort of thing. 
Now to set up a calibration curve, what we need to do is we will start with the first mix. We will say, we will designate it as a standard from this drop down menu here. Now once you do this for one, in this case, we only have three different analytes. So number two, sample number two has three lines, one for each analyte, amitriptyline, oxycodone, and methadone. Once we designate that particular sample as a standard, it updates all three of those lines. So you don't have to go in manually and change it for every single line, which is a nice function. So we'll change mix the calibrators to be standards. And then we will look at some curves. Okay. So now, one of the things I like to do when I'm building my standard curves is to go ahead and check the integrations of the analytes before I go too far. And the easiest way to do that is to do what we talked about before, which is called a query, which essentially is sorting your data in a very specific way. So up here above your table, if you right click, go to the query, say new, it brings up a query edit field. Now, generally, all we need to use are these designations where we change it. You can change it from sample, analyte, internal standard, the same things we looked at when we changed the columns, when we went to edit the columns. So I'm going to leave it at sample. We'll change the sample to sample type. You can change between it is or is not. For this purpose, we're going to say is, and it is a standard. Let me add that to this box right here. So what that means is every sample that we have in this result database, which is considered a standard, which is designated as a standard, is going to be sorted and removed from this into its own little section. So we're going to execute that. And as you can see, where previously we had a, a lot of lines, now we have only these 21 lines because it's all of our standards in one by itself which makes it a lot easier, I'll show you in just a second, where it makes it easier to actually check your integrations. If you want to go back to your full um, result database, if you can either click on this button right here which says show all samples or you can right click again and say full and it will show you every injection that you made that you have applied to this quantitation method. So whereas before we had 150 lines, when we did our query, we sorted it down to a more manageable amount. So we're going to do that again. Query, new, the sample comment, no, the sample type is standard. We're going to add it and execute. So again, we've just moved all of our standards into a more manageable area. So before we go any further, we should go ahead and save this, save as. You can save it as whatever you'd like to designate it at. We're going to relate it to the quant method file with the same name. Say save. So in case we have some sort of problem, we haven't lost all the work we just did. Now we're going to check our integrations of our standards. So the icons that we have up here, as we talked about previously, if you remember, when we have the navigation bar open, whichever mode that you're in, you have different icons available to you. So, as you can see from this pane right here, we're in the quantitate mode. This drop down menu correlates to everything in your navigation bar. And as you can see, we are in a quantitation mode. So, in the quantitation mode, you have options to perform a peak review in a window by itself. We're going to select that. That's going to show you the integrations that we were looking for. Now, what we can see from this is we haven't set it up in a way that would be very manageable. So, let's close this window and set up some defaults that are more applicable. Let me see if I can find these. New quantitation results table settings. Nope. Didn't I just do this? 
think it's peak review settings. Yes. Okay, so in the default peak review options, you can, all, you can determine which number of rows and columns you'd like to use. So you can do it up to six. Two for us is pretty manageable. Um, we need to do an internal standard review to also make sure the internal standard is integrated appropriately. So we have review with each analyze selected. What we would like to do is we would like the software to go ahead and zoom in on the peaks so that they're easier to see without an enormous amount of baseline present, but that we don't miss the details either. So we're going to select a different zooming. And we're also going to say that we would like the um, software to integrate or to zoom into the time axis to view a peak. Now, a two-minute window is okay. I like mine to be a little bit bigger than that. Let's try three and see how we like it. You can also um, select a default manual integration where if we'll automatically reject any manual integrations that you do if there is a designated percent difference in the areas. We don't use that function very much, but it is an option. So let's try that again. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So what we've got here, this we can tell is our very first standard. It's sample 001. It tells us the analyte. It lets us know the transition that we're looking at. It tells us the total number of samples. And it also tells us that it didn't find a peak, which is good because this is a zero calibrator. It lets us see our Mepivacaine int integration. It tells us what our transition is. Again, the same total number of samples. When it integrates a peak, it's going to show you the area counts and the peak height and the retention time. So we can see that our amitriptyline and oxycodone is not picking up anything for our zero calibrator. So let's go to the next page. It's not picking up any methadone, which is good because that's our zero calibrator. Now it's not really showing us a very good zoomed in picture here of our first calibrator, so let's go back to our default options and see if we can't make them a little bit better. Peak review settings. Let's try that function and see. The 100% of largest peak. See how we like that. Oh, much better. Okay, so if we go back to the very first analyte in the zero calibrator, you can see that it will show you just a little bit of the background. You can tell the intensity is not very much. There are no specific peaks here. It's all just some background noise. If we go to the next page, you start to see it is actually integrating the compounds in our second sample, sample two of 50, which is our very first calibrator. And we just flip through the pages to make sure that all of our compounds are integrated appropriately. Now you can see the oxycodone peak, as we saw before, it's not as uh, smooth as the later eluders, but we've tried to accommodate that by making the bunching and the smoothing factors appropriate. So it appears as if everything integrated well. So we're going to close this review window. What you can also use is this peak review pane, which is going to open up a pane with all of the same information we just saw, but you can also see your result database at the same time. Let's remove that pane. Now for calibrators, we need to check our calibration curve. We've got two icons to check for that. We've got the calibration in a separate window, or we can do the calibration in an, a pane that shows up so you can also see your result database. So let's look at it as a, in a window, because you can see, oops. Well, it helps when you tell it what your concentrations are. So for our compounds, we need to tell it specifically what the concentrations are. So for the first three, it's going to be zero. Now, it will not, when we did the batch, um, building the acquisition batches, it had a nice function where you could select panes and do a fill down. You don't have that option here. You have to manually enter the 
concentrations for each one of your analytes. back in that curve and see how it looks. Okay, so in this pane what you can see is we've got our specific analytes with, that we can interchange with the ones that are available. In this case it's amitriptyline. If we go to the drop down we can change it to oxycodone or methadone. We can see that it's an area regression. We can change that to height if we want to. We can change the regression itself by making it quadratic or forcing it through zero and some other available functions. We can change the weighting from this page too. When you do, when you do go to change the regression, you, it gives you an option between reverting to the previous one or accepting the new changes. We didn't make any changes, we just tabbed through it, so we'll just say revert. You can see that it's got our result database file name which is the RDB file extension. It tells us specifically which compound we're looking at, it, the type of regression, and no weighting. It also gives us the curve of the line and the R, the R value for that curve. Now this software will not give you an R squared value, it only gives you the R value, so we had to make some adaptations because of that. But you can see that this curve is not too bad. If we had points we wanted to omit, we, without going back to the result database, we could select that point and right click and it gives us some options about excluding that point from the curve. We can exclude that single point from this one curve or we can exclude it from all the curves. When you exclude, it still shows the point's position but it's no longer highlighted so it's not involved in the calculation of the curve of the line. You can then, if you've changed your mind and you decide it's not that bad, you want to include it, you include it again. You have some other um, functions that you can perform on each individual peak that exclude and include are the most common ones. Let's check our other curves. Oxycodone looks nice. And the methadone looks nice too. So all of our curves appear to be successful. Now what we need to do is we need to evaluate the positive controls, but they are not in this pane because we have performed a query and sorted our data. So we need to go back to the full screen of all of our samples. So we're going to select that function. And as you can see, it's brought us back to all of our lines of data. Since, again, this is a big result database file and we want it to be a little more manageable, we can do another query to sort it for the controls. We will say, we'll leave it at sample type. We will, or the field group will leave it sample. We'll change it to sample comment. And you have an extra selection now and you can use the contains. So we will say that the sample comment contains the word control. We'll execute that. So what it's done is anything in our result database where the sample comment has the word control in it has been sorted into a new query. So all of our controls are now sorted just like our standards were sorted a few minutes ago. So for this set of data we want to do something similar which is check our integrations and make sure that they look appropriate. So we're going to go to our peak review window again and we're going to tab through each pane of data to make sure that everything is integrating appropriately. Occasionally the software will integrate something that is not methadone. Not sure what that is, but let's see. Everything else seems to be okay. So
So, another thing that is nice to check when you are evaluating your data is the internal standard peak areas. You want to make sure that your internal standard amounts are consistent from sample to sample. We check their integration, so we shouldn't have any integration problems. We just need to make sure that one is not maybe a poor extractor or something of that nature. That one seems to be a little bit low, so we'll check that one in a second. Okay, when you're looking at a result database and you want to just, you want to go to a specific file and you don't want to have to start at the beginning. So in this case, we would like to look at number 32. We can select the 32 box and then click on the peak review window and it will take us right to that box that we selected. It doesn't seem to be an integration problem because we already checked that, but it does appear to be a little bit low. We might not want to use that for our data. The last thing that we can check is the results. Now, in this case, our controls are designated to be at 0.5 milligrams per liter. So, those look good. Included in the result database automatically, one of the default columns is the calculated concentration in our designated units. Let's lower that a little bit so you can see the units. So we can tell those are good. Those are in the designated area. So are those. So are those. I think that is our small peak that was integrating something besides methadone, which is why it's giving us a result there. So all of our controls appear to be doing well. The next thing to do would be to process any of your unknowns in this um, result database. 